Hello and welcome to the British Library South Asia seminar series, which is part of our research and digitization project, Two Centuries of Indian Print. This is our second seminar online, and we are very happy to have amongst us today, Kanu Priya Dhingra, who's going to talk about the Sunday Brook Market of Darya Ganj in Delhi. Kanupriya is a research scholar at the Center for Cultural, Literary and Postcolonial Studies at SOAS London. Uh, she's supported by a Felix Scholarship Fund. Her current research engages with the parallel book markets of Old Delhi and draws on multiple methodologies from book history, oral history, urban studies, anthropology, and postcolonial studies. She has delivered talks on her doctoral research at the University of Oxford, the Books and Prints Initiative, and the Institute of Historical Research at the School of Advanced Studies. She is in Counters, University of Delhi, Ambedkar University, and Jadavpur University in Kolkata. Her work has appeared in Himal South Asian, The Caravan, Scroll India, Indian Literature, and News India, amongst others. We are also delighted to have Dr. Swati Moitro as our chair. Swati is an assistant professor at the Department of English at Gurudash College, University of Calcutta. She has earlier taught at Shivaji College and Miranda House in University of Delhi. Her areas of interest are book history and histories of readership, feminist historiography and women's history, 19th century studies, cultural studies, digital cultures, and new media. Briefly about the format of the seminar, Kanupriya is going to give a talk for around 30 to 45 minutes, and then we'll have a short 15 minute discussion between the chair and the speaker, after which we'll open this up for audience Q&A. If you would like to uh, put in your questions during the talk, feel free to use the Q&A box or the chat box to send us your questions and we'll take them in order. So without much further ado, I invite Kanupriya Dhingra to talk about the Sunday book market of Darya Ganj in Delhi. Thank you so much, Priyanka. Thank you, British Library, for this excellent opportunity. Um, I hope I'm visible now. Yeah, so uh, this talk uh, is titled Locating Dayagan Sunday Book Bazaar. And before I start reading it, I would like to take my audience through two elaborate scenes about the market from before and after the relocation. So scene one. On a Sunday morning before July 21, 2019, you find yourself facing the shutdown Golcha Cinema on Netaji Subhash Mark in Daryaganj, Old Delhi. You could be a local, a recent migrant to the city or a tourist. On any other day, most of the regular shops on this road are open, selling medical equipment, musical instruments, among other publisher officers, uh, and some sex clinics and a few local and multinational food joints, and also a government owned beer and wine shop. Before these shops open early in the morning from approximately 4 a.m. to 8 a.m., a vegetable market is set up on, 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 on these footpaths. On Sundays, the vegetable market runs, but most of the regular shops and offices on this busy commercial road are shut down for their weekly day off. Instead, starting around uh, from 9 a.m., you spot an elongated flea market on the footpath or patri that spills over to cover the closed shutters of the footpaths behind them. Like any other flea market or weekly bazaar in Delhi, there is a stretched line of vendors on the sidewalk that line has a dominant and rather distinct visual presence as well. It has changed the way how Darya Ganj looks on any other day of the week. It is because of this line of vendors, most of whom are selling only books, the patri is occupied by walkers and pedestrians, and in much higher number than, and, uh, than it is on the weekdays. Among them, uh, most are here to buy books, and the books that are, after, uh, are, are laid out on the ground or have been creatively arranged by the vendors, either neatly on the ground so that the titles are visible to the walkers or heaped together with distinct colorful signs declaring the price per kilo or per book. Uh, the books are not just of one type, but of various kinds in varying degrees of newness and oldness. And the pedestrians or walkers bend over one stall after another until they reach the one that attracts their attention. You walk towards the crowd to be a part of it. 
Further on, as you walk along Netaji Subhash Mark, you also encounter a few makeshift and permanent bookshops along the sidewalk. These are quite unlike the regular bookshops that you might see or visit across Delhi, like the famous Jain bookstore in Connaught Place, the uh, famous Bahari Sons in Khan Market, or the bookshop in Jorbag, all shiny mirrors and air-conditioned coolness. The bookshops of uh, Netaji Subhash Mark have similar selling patterns to the stalls on the Patri. Books are piled together, mostly divided by genre, on elevated surfaces, covered with sheets of paper or cloth. The prices are fixed, and books are sold by, weights, uh, by weight unless they are rare books. To show the price of these rare books, you must ask the bookshop owner. Some of the crowd in the Patri enters these bookshops as well. One could claim that the bookstalls look like an extension of these shops only in case, uh, in this case, we know which came first, the chicken or the egg, which is the stalls. You might have spotted some similar stalls or bookshops on smaller lanes leading into Darya Ganj via Netaji Subhash Mark. As you follow the trail of book vendors on the footpath walking towards Delhi Gate or Dilli Gate as locals call it, you turn right into the sidewalks of Asafali Road. You continue walking from, Delhi, uh, from the Delegate Metro Station exit number three and do not stop until you have reached Delight Cinema, which like Golcha is one of the city's uh, historic cinema halls. Here the line of booksellers eventually ends. If as you walked from Golcha Cinema to Delight, you found a book that interested you because it was old and inexpensive or because your grandfather had a copy of it or for any other peculiar or personal reason, and you decided to buy it, it is quite possible that you had to bargain as well unless you bought it from the fixed price lot. You could have exited the book market at any point uh, since it has no specific beginning uh, or an end, despite the fixed geographical span. This L-shaped market was known as uh, Daryagan Sunday Patri Kitab Bazaar until it was shut down in July 2019 and relocated in September 2019, renamed as Sunday Book Bazaar Mahila Hat. I'll take a moment to share my screen before I continue. So uh, I'll move on to the next scene. On a Sunday morning after September 28, 2019, you walk out of one of the exit gates of Delegate Metro Station and into the Ganj. Uh, you start looking for the book market on the pavements. Instead, you find very few booksellers with hardly any books lying in front of them, who tell you that this is all that is left of the Ryagan Sunday Patri Kitab Bazaar. But what are they still doing here, you ask? They tell you, or you, over, uh, or you overhear some of them talking to the media people present, that they are raising their voice together against the North Delhi Municipal Corporation to retain the footpaths of Netaji Subhash Mark and Asaf Ali Mark as the official vending zone for secondhand books. These booksellers are dissatisfied with the relocation, it appears. Beti bachao, beti padhao, bina kitab kaise padhegi beti? Save the girl child, educate the girl child, how will she study without a book? is one among the several slogans they have put on display. Uh, the book vendors claim that Darya Gan Sunday Patri Kitab Bazaar was an, was an institution in its own right and part of the larger economy of the education in the city uh, and in the country as well. You're given a pamphlet explaining their struggle. Uh, the nostalgia of the streets is still brewing inside the bookshops that used to be the extensions of the Patri bookstalls. They are unusually overcrowded with buyers lining up to the cash counter. Most of the buyers are those who used to come to, their, uh, to this market for their weekly stock of books from the Patri Kitab Bazaar and, and are now flocking inside the bookshops that in the absence of Sunday Book Bazaar carry its semblance. This bustle grows less in the coming weeks. If you're more informed since you have followed the news about the relocation in reports online or in print, you walk further along Asafali Road to right in front of Broadway Hotel, another historic landmark in the old city, which is unfortunately shut down now. This is where you spot Mahila Hut, the new officially designated location for the sale of secondhand books in Delhi and an alternative to the Daryagan Sunday Patri Kitab Bazaar. You enter the market from the only entry gate, which leads to an elevated platform. There is a second gate at the other end of the heart, but neither the vendors nor the visitors use it. Along the stairs, a newly built pavement allows rickshaws and lorries to enter the book market so that the books can be brought in, although with much difficulty and labor. 
once you have climbed the stairs, you, you can see a book market all at once. There are numbers painted on the marble floor and the whole platform is marked and divided into uniform rectangles, six feet wide and four feet long, outlined with yellow paint. The books here are arranged in similar yet somewhat diverse ways compared to the streets. Some booksellers are exploring novel ways such as putting books on a low elongated table instead of you know, directly on the ground or uh, they have started building forts with spines of the books facing outwards or inwards and the bookseller standing inside to guide you through them and, and you know, negotiate the price. Some stalls have installed tall umbrellas, you know, protecting the booksellers from excessive sunlight, uh, along with other accessories as you see in the picture as well, such as standing bookshelves, which are not used earlier in the Patri Kita Bazaar. As you walk inside the hut, if you find a book that interests you because it is old and, in and inexpensive or because your grandfather had a copy of it or for any other peculiar reason or personal reason you buy it, possibly you had to bargain here as well, unless you bought it from the fixed price lot and you exit from the same gate from which you had entered as and when it pleases you without necessarily having explored the real corners of Mahila Hut. So these souvenirs uh, offer a glimpse of what the Daryagan Sunday Patri Kitab Bazaar looked like on the streets of Daryaganj and how an attempt has been made to recreate the experience inside Mahila Hat, even if it is in a partial way. Building on these visual samples of the appearance, experience and the rhythm of the two book markets, this talk focuses on their spatiality. What goes into making the character of the space of these book markets and the experience of being inside and traversing these spaces is what I call locating these book markets. By locating, I mean both the experience of finding and reaching these spaces and the elements that make up their particular speciality. Their location, the threshold between outside and the inside space and the aesthetics of each space the rules and the regulations that are implemented, bypassed or bent by either of the three principal actors, the booksellers, the book buyers, and the civic authorities that determine the use of the public space. The book bazaar on the streets and later inside Mahila Hut, of course revolves around the experience of selling and buying books, an experience that is beyond its commercial connotations, also a sensory one, partly because of the space in which it occurs. Moreover, the act and process of locating is a three-way engagement between these three major actors. Over time, booksellers have periodically turned some streets into Daryaganj, uh, some streets of Daryaganj into a book market by negotiating with the available space. Uh, the civic authorities, the second set of actors, have regulated uh, and they do regulate still the use of this space sparingly or deliberately forcing, pushing, or prompting the sellers to create new additional patterns of occupation. The third actor, the pedestrians who have motivated the creations uh, of these official and unofficial patterns of occupation and have navigated through them are, I feel, the rather understated participants of the geographical and sensory dimensions that the space of the street has to offer. I will argue through this talk that uh, these participants, the sellers, pedestrians, and the civic authorities have enabled the spatialization of the streets of Daryaganj into a periodic book bazaar. A stop go history of the bazaar. There are several origin stories about Daryaganj book market located in Old Delhi, and the now relocated market is said to have been in operation since the Mughal Empire. Historian Sohail Hashmi informs me that Akbar Abadi Begum, one of Shah Jahan's wives, built this market in, in its earliest form. Several historical maps of Delhi show the existence of Fairs Bazaar in this area. The name Daryaganj itself means a market across river, where Darya refers to a river, which is the river Yamuna, and Ganj refers to a site where trade is conducted. It was not always the same product which was traded here, though. Daryaganj only became synonymous with the sale of used, rare, and pirated books in the 1960s. According to the locals, uh, the Ryagan started as a consumer goods market before this, set up uh, adjacent to the walls between Subhash Park and Kasturba Gandhi Hospital. There were vinyl records and hand-mounted record players, radios, transistors, uh, medical goods and used clothes, and somehow, eventually in this process, books too found their place here. 
and after a few minor relocations, not significantly far away from the lanes of Darya Ganj, a few booksellers moved to the now absent Lohe Ka Pul or Iron Bridge near Golcha Cinema, from where the street market began to expand. Now, before its relocation to Mahila Hat, the bazaar extended to Delight Cinema Hall. So it was from one cinema hall to another in a long L shape with books tagged on the sidewalks of Netaji Subhash Mark and Esapali Road with more than 250 booksellers. Now, a number of these vendors in Darya Ganj Book Bazaar have uh, become booksellers accidentally. Your regular Sunday book vendor at Darya Ganj might have been a freelance photographer, an Urdu lecturer, a New Delhi Municipal Council official, a rickshaw puller, a newspaper hawker, a vegetable hawker, an embroiderer, a copy editor or a stenographer, and so on. Most of them found their way through books by chance, they say. And once they did, most of them remained in the business for decades and created unique knowledge systems using which their fellow booksellers have survived here over the years. Now, Darya Gan Sunday Book Bazaar was officially registered as a natural market by the North Delhi Municipal Corporation, which is the administrative body that controls and uh, uh, which, which controls the regulated and irregulated spaces in North Delhi. And as for the Street Vendors Act, uh, 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 in, uh, which was uh, established in 2014, which you see on your screens now, uh, a natural market means a market where sellers and buyers have traditionally congregated for the sale and purchase of products or services and has been determined as such by the local authority. It can be understood as a space which develops over the course of time where interaction between buyers and sellers happens without significant institutional intervention. That is how the space becomes a natural creation on, in, in the urban landscape. So it's safe to say, perhaps even officially sanctioned, that the book bazaar exemplified serendipity. Darya Gan Sunday Book Bazaar was a phenomenon occurring in the city at regular intervals. What a cursory glance looked like, uh, what with a cursory glance, you know, looked like a temporary, fluid, arbitrary space came to represent endurance in many ways. The market symbolized shift and changes, and yet, given the passage of time and the ways in which the market had been operating and had sustained itself, it came across as not impermanent, but as a space which had a certain rhythm to it. What I'm suggesting here is that throughout the course of several relocations, there were wonderful creative ways in which the Sunday Book Bazaar escaped institutional control and censorship in the manner in which the books were procured and published, the sparingly regulated location of the bookstalls, and the erratic yet inventive movement of the buyers. All of which made the market what it was, where randomness happened despite institutional control and regulation. So what the buyer finally decided to purchase is what I like to call their find of the day. The value of a find here was far beyond its marked price. Any book that was found for or in the Ganj carried a sacred value to it, which was determined by how and where it was located by the bookseller first and then the book buyer. The market mostly derived its identity uh, from its location on the streets. And as A.L. Varma, one of the oldest booksellers at the market, often exclaimed, there is a machine reworking behind this market. Now, there are at least three specialized circuits that operate in the present day book bazaar. I define them as the traditional circuit of secondhand books uh, sourced locally and internationally. These would be some of the examples of those. This is the second circuit, which is the study material circuit with syllabus books and its ancillary uh, out of syllabus books. And the most recent entry is that of uh, digital uh, uh, and, and you know, duplicate pirated books, which the booksellers like to call Diki Kitab. The books are sold by weight or on a fixed rate and they are very, very inexpensive. And uh, there is a scope for intensive negotiation, which applies especially to the rare editions of books regular visitors to this book market held a firm belief that every book that had ever been desired enough made its way to the Ryagan Sunday Book Bazaar to find its true reader. I will not completely dismiss their conviction, but uh, I've since found that there is a process to acquiring the books which has been duly followed for several years. The booksellers of Darya Ganj create value out of discarded material, and there are precise methods of evaluation of a book's, val uh, book's value when it leaves the proper communication circuit. 
A book's departure from this circuit is not fixed either. The books found in book on, on in, in this book bazaar have been procured by the booksellers um, after the tedious process of uh, traveling across the city and oftentimes also across the country. And the booksellers acquired these books, which they thought had you know resale value from varied sources, which you see on some of which uh, you see on, uh, see on your screens now, such as paper markets or kabali walas, railway auctions, containers from US and UK, school libraries and in-house libraries of the deceased of the city, and also the remaining stocks from the publishers. As they you know, tell stories about themselves and about the relationship with the market and its people, they declare their association with the city. So one of the booksellers, Sharif Ahmed, once, uh, once told me, you can ask me anything about the city and I have grown up on the streets of Delhi. Uh, I asked one of them, uh, you know, how did you find Darya Ganj? He very proudly said, Delhi se hon, I'm from Delhi. Like, obviously, I knew, I, I knew about the city. But that wasn't the case with other booksellers as well. There are several who are migrants. There are several who have found their way to their families through internal collect, uh, you know, connections, through outside connections, and so on and so forth. And this person, Sharif Ahmed, you know, particularly, he's proud of being one of those who participated in the making of Darya Ganj Sunday Book Market in the Old City. So, you know, consider Francesca Orsini's profound statement here, silence is not absence, spaces that look empty are in fact teeming with other people and their own tastes, stories and trajectories. We just need to look elsewhere. So Darya Ganj Patri Kitab Bazaar in this sense is elsewhere uh, as it becomes a parallel site for the circulation of books that could not make it the regular way or were given a second chance of sorts and afterlife of sorts. Unfortunately, the Patri Kitab Bazaar from the streets is now gone. And I will now talk about what happened to the street bazaar. Based on, Delhi, uh, based on a Delhi High Court order uh, dated July 3, 2019, North Delhi Municipal Corporation mandated that the street market here has to be removed, uh, quoting traffic concerns. And Netaji Subhashmar, which housed a part of Daryagan Sunday Book Market, was declared a non-vending zone. In a display of solidarity, vendors also decided not to set up stalls on Asaf Ali Mark, uh, which did not come under the purview of the High Court order. But since not all of the vendors would have been able to occupy that area, they 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 decided not to, you know, set up the books or uh, uh, you know bookstalls only on one side. And until two to three months after the displacement, the vendors were left waiting for a decision on either. Uh, you know, having their stalls uh, back at the street or being offered an alternative space each week causing life, uh, you know, loss of livelihood and making the vendors more and more desperate than ever. The market has been shut down uh, on, on earlier occasions, uh, mostly around national festivals or during any event in the city uh, which required extra security. So when this happened uh, for about two to three weeks, the vendors were expecting that this is happening because of August 15, Independence Day, but then it took them three weeks to realize that, no, this is not that case. And very interesting uh, uh, thing to note here is that they were not given a legal notice initially. They, they just received a phone call and they had to you know, evacuate the space. So uh, they were kept in the dark for a very long time. Uh, during all these instances, the booksellers and the general public were rarely given any explanation to what is happening. I'm talking about uh, you know, previously when the market had been you know, shut down. Uh, however, the market would re would always, you know, come back into action. It would be revived through public intervention with people raising the absolute need for both books and a book market such as Darya Ganj in, in the city. Now, uh, following this closure, the booksellers held protests, one of which you see on your screens now. Uh, in one of them, the vendors formed a human chain on Asafali Road. Each bookseller had representatively put one book in front of them. What they're holding is the poster that you see on the right. Uh, so uh, a very interesting thing that happened was even when they had representatively put just one book uh, uh, you know, in, in front of them, even those books were attracting buyers. So uh, it was an example of how the location of the book bazaar on these footpaths had become at par with you know, the, the sale of books. If you, if you were here and you were in the proximity of books, you would be buying books here. Uh, on another day of protest, they collected hundreds of testimonies from the visitors who were dismayed at discovering the market absent from the streets yet again for a prolonged period of time. To bypass the pavandi or the censorship, uh, several booksellers were seen uh, you know, adopting inventive ways of selling books uh, from inconspicuous spaces to avoid confiscation on a staircase or in an auto. 
I have a couple of pictures here. So this is when the you know protests were uh, up in action, and this is how one of the booksellers had decided to sell books. This is ten-year-old uh, Tejas, whose father had gone to collect customers from here and there so that they could come and you know buy books from here. The books that you see here are from the syllabus circuit. So, and this was also around July. So there were a lot of students who were flocking this space because they had to buy inexpensive books. And the you know picture on the left and the right is you know, these, these, these booksellers trying to find uh, hidden spaces on those roads so that they can still, uh, you know, carry on a lot of sales from the incidental buyers that were going to be there. Uh, so one of the booksellers was also helped by the residents in the area, very interestingly. So they allowed him to uh, display his books inside their house so that the vendor uh, had asked one of his helpers to stand outside on the main road so that he could, you know, call customers inside. Now, the protests that were being held in front of uh, exit three of Delhi Gate Metro Station in the same area were striving to have the book bazaar's historical presence, uh, uh, sorry, historical importance recognized, which, was, uh, with, which would uh, legitimize its existence on the streets uh, as against the closed control space of Mahila Hat. Uh, the vendor stated that the eviction of the market has effectively violated the Street Vendors Act and the recently formulated street vendors scheme in 2019. Uh, their claim was that the eviction of vendors uh, without the recently formed uh, town vending committees first conducting a survey to map the vending conducted, uh, you know, conducting uh, in, in the area as mandated by the scheme is a violation of the principal premise of the legislation and the older street vendors act. And much more uh, than a year has passed since the booksellers, uh, you know, had been forcefully evacuated. And throughout this year, except during the national lockdown, vendors are still fighting to gain the street bags. They have now started to put up their temporary stalls outside Mahila Hut. Earlier, while the protests were being held at Asafali Road, their books were frequently confiscated by the municipal officials, mostly without even providing them with any mandatory paperwork needed before and after the confiscation. So if you spent a Sunday at Darya Ganj, as I did for several months there throughout this drama was happening, the whole situation would look like a Sisyphean task where the protesting booksellers became used to it and not in a promising way. So they would, you know, come there, have their books confiscated and then come again. And this was just happening every Sunday until September 2019. And then it continued later on as well. The protesting booksellers became used to it, not in a promising way, as I said, and some vendors at Mahila Hat who say that they had to opt for this alternative option after having waited for so long, still hoped that Darya Ganj market would reappear since, you know, the business at Mahila Hat wasn't going well for them. We, we, and, and, you know, one of them exclaimed, we bring uh, fewer books here, it is inconvenient and the space is relatively more expensive than the streets were. On the streets, the ability to spread books across the footpath worked in the vendor's favor, allowing for the titles to be displayed and also allow, uh, you know, allowing for quite a few incidental readers to uh, you know, enter the space. And this is no longer possible inside the market, which has a very limited space of you know, six by four foot uh, uh, you know, allocated space. And to make the matters worse, the booksellers who set up their stalls towards the rear end of the complex did not get equal attention from the customers, which was absolutely not happening on the streets. So uh, one of the booksellers exclaimed that Mahila Hat does have a certain glamour to it, but that doesn't necessarily help the business. The timings are limited as well. So these booksellers are quite aware of the constraints and are wary of the cost of setting their you know, stalls at Mahila Hat as well. And if you have stopped coming to the market altogether and they're pursuing their you know, business via internet or you know, WhatsApp and phone calls and so on, uh, several booksellers returned to their hometown during the pandemic with bleaker hopes of returning to the city. And even if they do, they would want to be returning as a book vendor at Darya Ganj. Now, even the bookshop owners and other vendors situated in the vicinity of the street market's uh, previous location have mentioned that the hustle bustle on Sundays brought about by the book market was conducive to producing more sales for them. As for the local residents in the area, they are aware now more than ever of the significance that the book market played in their everyday routine. Apparently, it's all very, very dull now. But what would be the cost of this beautification? The relocation of Patri Kitab Bazaar brings to light the schism between uh, the idea of redevelopment that the civic authorities seem to have 
and the concerns of the citizens. Daryagan Sunday Book Bazaar is not the first or the only book market to have been erased by the city authorities in the interests of development. The destinization of Ajmal Khan Road in Karol Bag zone is currently underway, uh, flaunted by the official website of North Delhi Municipal Corporation. The roadside market in Kamlanagar in North Delhi, which falls under the Keshapuram zone, is another market space which will be affected by this recent drive uh, for beautification. Meena Bazaar in Old City is yet another example and has been fighting this battle for a very awful long time. Vendors in the bazaar were also evicted by the authorities here, raising similar concerns related to traffic and illegal encroachment. Now, while complete removal of the market space is a threat affecting the street vendors' livelihoods, informal markets have been dealing with rather subtle fears as a part of their everyday business routine as well. For instance, it is usual for the vendors at Sarojini Nagar Market, a second-hand cloth market in Delhi, to clean up the sections of their stalls which encroach on the public space, knowing that the police could arrive at very specific hours of the day. As long as the encroachment is not seen by the authorities, the shopkeepers are excused of the fine that they would otherwise have to pay for setting up their stalls outside the officially designated area. The vendors at Darya Book Market always found themselves on the safer side as far as their you know, everyday evacuation was concerned. Their stalls were set up under Teh Bazari, which is a system where sellers paid a small amount for their occupation of the area. So their occupation was actually legal, and even uh, if they had to, you know, extend their stall a bit, uh, in you know, uh, into the footpath, or you know, in uh, even even if they had to enter the you know bookshop inside, uh, they they would always find formal informal ways to communicate with with you know either the booksellers or the civic authorities, pay them a certain amount of bribe, and they were they, their everyday, uh, uh, you know, weekly uh, arrangement was going on well. Uh, and it was only after July 2019 that the fear of a permanent removal took shape and they were eventually relocated from the streets. In the, in the 50 years of this market's uh, survival here in the streets, this is the first time this happened. And there is more beyond these official hurdles. The sense of discovery achieved by walking on the streets of Daryaganj is missing from Mahila Hat, which is a, a much more controlled space. At the heart, the crowd is definite. Uh, all those who are present are the chosen ones. Those who have made a decision to step inside the book market and buy uh, books for their home libraries, their children to prepare for their examinations, or even to resell books for a profit at their bookstores. Now inside the closed space of Mahila Heart, no one can accidentally become a book buyer as was typically the case with, the, with you know, the Ganj market on the streets. So broadly speaking, uh, the gated architectural feature of the heart has a different cultural appeal. It has several places to sit at, to mull over your purchase or to meet your friends. The same Chaiwala would visit periodically to serve tea to all the vendors and a few buyers as well. He tells me he dreams of having a tea stall inside the premises of the new book market one day. You could see, you know, children playing on the moved uh, on 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 the grass around uh, inside the green spaces at Mahila Hat, and the, and uh, you would also see groups of students interacting with each other, mulling over their purchase, uh, you know, purchases. What, what what did one get? What what did the other get? And how they could have you know gotten a book for a better price. And at the bazaar instead, uh, people used to you know huddle at each bookstall as as you know other readers would join, and there would be other pedestrians walking around as well. Uh, you know, cutting across the queue of the booksellers until they were tired and they left for when, uh, for uh, you know, where they came from. While the street uh, would be an active, dynamic space. For example, if you see in these pictures, uh, the structure of hard would make it appear rather lazy, passive, and relaxed. And these are not selectively chosen pictures. These are random pictures, which would just, you know, I hope they, they would be able to, uh, you know, communicate this passivity that I'm talking about. So now, now Mahila Hart would have uh, the look of a book fair in Delhi, for example, instead of what the street market, you know, kind of entailed. Uh, now, uh, this brings me towards uh, almost the end of my uh, talk. Uh, what does this relocation represent? Uh, from the point of view of the officials at the North Delhi Municipal Corporation, uh, 
that the city of Delhi allows for change, for growth, for redevelopment, and that the residents of Delhi, current and prospective, may look forward to a more regulated and beautified city in the near future. A smart city, as they say. But the question remains that if there were possible ways to institutionalize the space such that there were no loss of incidental readership, something that is immensely useful to vendors. So what, what we were looking for was a sort of a balance between this permutation and combination of order and chaos, which had to be reinstated. Now here, institutionalization would refer to finding an alternative approach that would lead to a better judicious reuse of the original uh, site of the street itself. Delhi's uh, hybrid architectural landscape hides several monuments among other markers of its historicity. You may discover them as you try to simply be in this city, much like finding books in Sunday book market. Darya Ganj Patri Kitab Bazaar happened to be a rather serendipitous institution, historical as it was as well, that the city would hide and unhide on Sundays. Those who knew of it would compulsively never skip a visit. Those who didn't know of it would have, had they happened upon the streets of Darya Ganj. However, with a sterile repurposing of the streets allocated to the book market, that is not the case anymore. You may not accidentally become a book buyer as you once might have. It is all a part of a larger plan now and the only fear being faced by a book bazaar romantic like me is that we might have lost the Patri Kitab Bazaar to this plan. That actually brings me to the end of my talk and Thank you so much. Uh, I think I ended earlier than I was supposed to, but. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kanupriya. I'm sure a lot of us today who are here with you listening to your talk and who've had the experience of going to the book market in Darya Ganj, we are feeling very nostalgic after listening to your presentation. Um, I would now like to invite Dr. Swati Moitra uh, to chair this event and also to engage in a discussion with Kanupriya. Swati, over uh, to you. Yes, uh, Priyanka, I think you'll have to uh, start my video because ah, I can start it now. Thank you. Hi. Just a minute, please. Let me just set this up. Right. Hi. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to uh, thank Priyanka for inviting me over to talk and to the British Library for hosting this in the first place. Thank you so much, Kanup Kanupriya. This was absolutely wonderful. I was partially weepy about it because I have wandered around those streets so many times on so many Sundays and found so many books, as you so eloquently put, that the loss of that space and that chaos and, you know, your feet beginning to ache as you run out of money because those days money was at a premium and you still look for that one book you don't know what you're looking for exactly but you know you keep hoping that you'll come across you'll stumble into something extraordinary and for those of us who had the experience of Kolkata's College Street before this we often made comparisons not necessarily fairly uh, about the nature of such street markets and knowledgeable booksellers and such but overall it was always an experience of chaos of dynamism and of absolute of interacting with the city and these books in a particular way that made Darya Ganj so special. As you got tired, you stopped over and, you know, ate something, chaat or samosas, or maybe drank something because often in summer it got very hot. So this entire experience of shopping for books, which is also an experience in chaos and endurance, is something that the book market really stood for. And of course, speaking as someone who has never been to the new version of it, uh, your images did seem to convey a certain lack of that dynamism. And instead, though, this might be my bias speaking, uh, because I do miss that old space. And instead, it seemed to be one of the typical instances of the Delhi authorities stepping in 
and you cited so many examples because uh, of, of stepping in uh, and seeking to beautify the city as though such spaces are simply too chaotic to be considered particularly beautiful. And this has been a consistent problem in Delhi, as you've cited. In fact, I was horrified to learn about Kamlanagar, but we've seen similar developments happening in the neighboring uh, Chandni Chowk, which is again experiencing a similar process of so-called proposed beautification. Right? So Darya Ganj is of course, part and parcel of that cities of the city's culture of such marketplaces and as you were speaking i was reminded both of delhi's hearts and by hearts i do not simply mean the mahila heart or the sanitized beloved but sanitized delhi heart but also the hearts that spring up in the city uh, in various locations on designated days where the vegetable vendors and other sellers show up on one particular day in a reminder of the village hearts. Uh, and these are not, and this, this, this is in from Posh Vasant Kunj to uh, say Masutpur to various locations. Delhi uh, does have these uh, hearts that are similar to the Darya Ganj book market, which used to. Uh, you know, appear on one particular day. It also reminded me, and especially reminded me when you were talking about the complex circuits of acquisition, these books that didn't quite make it to the mainstream circuit of the fancy bookshops, or maybe they did, and maybe they traveled various ways through institutional libraries, because we did find old library books. Who knows why somebody had sold them off? Uh, so when they eventually made it and had this second chance, I, again, I love that way, way, the way you spoke about that. They again reminded me of these similarly acquired markets of Delhi from the motor market of Chandni Chowk to the bicycle markets of Chandewala to the gullies of Chandni Chowk with the camera gully, with the Chandi and the silver, uh, the silver gully. All of them tend to acquire things in a, and not necessarily always through legitimate or circ, uh, circuits of acquisition. So the Darya Ganj book market, while at once unique, also seems to have this particularly uh, ephemeral and yet complex character that makes it very really characteristic of Delhi's other markets. And indeed, this is particularly remarkable because when you spoke of the prehistory of the book market, you pointed out that this too started out as a consumable goods market, which eventually where somehow the books won out and the books were here to stay. So that's something that really stuck with me. I was also particularly stuck by this idea of the uh, booksellers who have always been deeply inventive people because as you said that they are repositories of certain knowledge systems that we do not necessarily we may not necessarily consider as legitimate aspects of city living and yet these are the things and these are the people who make Delhi so uh, when you said that you know right at the beginning you were talking about their twisting of the government slogan beti bachao beti parhao which is you know teach the girl child save the girl child and saying that how will you teach the girl child if you don't have books the manner in which they twisted this particular slogan as a mark of protest was again something that i am extremely sorry this is exactly what i had uh, feared i'm sorry folks he really just wanted to say hi uh, i'm sorry anyway uh, yes um, i guess we have more flavor now right. so, as priyanka said earlier so yes as i was saying uh, this is some things that particularly stuck with me and this is what the first thing i really asked and i wanted to ask you that we are stuck at that fundamental question um calcutta's Cal college street similarly in the last days of the uh, left front government so this is around 2006-7 uh the government would eventually fall in 2011, would similarly seek to rehome the College Street book market. They started, they broke the old College Street uh, uh, market. There was an old market next door, which they started reconstructing. They named it Borno Porichoy, which is the alphabet, the book of alphabets by Vidyasagar. And they wanted to relocate the entire marketplace there. Now, as it would happen, it remains incomplete. A few booksellers moved on. Most did not. And it continues to be this bizarre thing there. But one of the things that 
beat this at these attempts this with this failed attempt at reconstructing in calcutta or the more successful attempt of relocation in delhi i think the question that i wanted to ask is who does the footpath belong to who does the patris of delhi belong to right and i would really appreciate if you told us a little bit about this constant tussle between the authorities the police Uh, and the con- the constitution of this place as a constantly contested site of the city as a natural market which is constantly regulated by the authorities if you could tell us a little bit more about this regulatory impulse on the part of the authorities that would be great thank you thank you so much swati um uh, you really ask a very interesting question who does the footpath belong to which brings me to this idea of legality and illegality also with respect to you know calcutta as well uh, there are ways in which the you know delhi government or the civic authorities would not want the cities to be operated and this is where uh, you know uh, incidences like these would you know uh, fall into but there are also there also have been ways in which uh, such uh, use of street uh, you know has been allowed so for example what part of the city is occupiable if i can use that word in a certain way is something that they want to determine and uh, about these uh, this idea of what is official what is unofficial what is legal what is illegal we all know that how, you, you know you know how it works in the city space where where what is on the paper is not something what you actually see in front of you as well so even even with you know uh, 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 this this specific bazaar it wasn't that earlier it was under a very uh, you know legal zone there, there were ways in which for example the books were acquired or the stalls were being set up and even you know who who was going to set up the stall where so for example in the official let, uh, in 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 the official list of these vendors there are 258 names registered but at once on every sunday there would not be more than 100 book sellers and there are there are certain or even if we talk about the books we see sent you know censored books here we see books that are out of publication here what book is entering the book market is also not always legal but uh, an important point that now that that this brings me to is that how this space is negotiated which is what you asked that you know who does this footpath belong to the footpath then belongs to someone who has been familiar with this space for a certain amount of time has been familiar with the commodity that they are selling is 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 familiar with the lane and is has also in the process gained familiarity with how to navigate these systems so michel de sartu has a very interesting uh, you know way of putting this where he he calls all of this as a creative bypassing of the strict contours of the city so you know possibly this is what the booksellers are doing here as well as in calcutta but then what the difference between you know the uh, use of this uh, uh, you know street space in calcutta's uh, you know boypara or here uh, in 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 delhi is that the booksellers there have spent a considerable amount of time there there is there is this element of historicity to which even the city dwellers and the migrants and the visitors and the tourists also relate to so since it has been a longer period of time there they had certain amount of agency with which not all the booksellers had to relocate they they could account on the historicity they could also you know rely on the knowledge systems that they had created there uh, but with the booksellers in darya ganj most of them were new so going back a little in the history as well for the first 30 years of this market there were only 10 to 15 booksellers who had been setting up the stalls here it was only in the last 20 years or so that newer booksellers had started to come up again you know as i mentioned in the talk relying upon the existing knowledge system that these booksellers had created these knowledge systems then uh, included this idea of legality and illegality how how to use the space who will come here who will not come here which book will be brought here so this this constant negotiation that then becomes a part of their uh, you know livelihood or 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 their sense of the place their sense of the city and their the sense of identity as a bookseller is something that, that you know i would need to reinstate here uh, so basically uh, what i needed to stress on was this idea of time and historicity with which uh, you gain familiarity with the space and the city and with which you also find these creative ways to you know navigate those spaces not necessarily in the strict ways in which the civic authorities would mandate it for you right uh, thank you so much and in fact that leads me to another question that uh, i had to ask because well this is something that you must at the moment uh, 
we started the, the this even became official and people started sharing the links we had a lot of people simply chiming in saying i miss darya ganj and that's something that's been a theme throughout and and so i what because we've been readers there we've been buyers there and we have constituted the space in our own ways in those times so what i wanted to ask you and when i was looking at the images that you shared again we had photographs of you know there was this one one of the images that you stuck at for a while was this young young girl who was at best 10 years old who she was sitting on a stool and reading mm-hmm. we had a bunch of people with the pages open and that something that we've done in our time browsing going through and i wanted to ask what you i mean these these sites of reading that we witness in a place like darya ganj which is almost an accidental book market the way you describe it so what does this accidental book market like darya ganj if i may call it that tell us about the city's relationship with reading itself mm. if that's something and what do the readers make of this space mm. if because delhi i i say this because delhi also happens to be one of india's most important uh, whether or not we uh, like it we have most important educational centers right mm. and it has certain claims to elite sites of reading uh, cut see the many lovely libraries and the archives that delhi has so uh, how do we read this accidental book market if we if you will yeah so the uh, as as i mentioned this is something that i'm writing my doctoral thesis on and the premise of my thesis is that darya ganj uh, has a parallel element of book history to it so if 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 i look at it with the lens of book history it's a parallel zone that i'm entering now why i call it parallel is uh, you know parallel is as against a proper circuit within which books are circulated a proper space in which books are found bought exchanged and again a proper set of people who do it right so it's not an alternative space it's a parallel space and that becomes important when we also look you know expand our lens to the city who is it that is entering the city who is the reader what do they want to read so if we look at the kind of books that reach the readers used books and pirated books why would somebody want to read these books there is a certain economy of anticipation happening with pirated books where you know you want that book for a certain a uh, uh, thing or 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 you know just because you like it just because you want to read it or 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 your teacher has asked you to read it but you can't buy it for rupees 500 you would rather buy it in a pirated form for rupees 100 and and you know where do you go f- uh, f- you know for that book to a parallel space such as the yagaj khan markis bahari sons would, would would have that in the pirated form it will not give you that amount of a discount but because you are a person who's coming from a certain social background you want that book immediately again with used books or even censored books uh there is a uh huge section of the city which is relying on this market which is why there is this constant need of you know reinstating this market and 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 not talking about the book sellers and talking about the readers who would you know come in defense of the market and not just regular readers we have had you know kushwan singh ramchandra guha you know validating this market's presence in 1992 and 2005 uh there are certain books which leave uh, uh you know their their you know proper spaces and then come here but there are certain books which are also available here parallelly and i'm i'm you know particularly talking about the migrant student population of delhi here who would want the same book and and you know they can compensate with you know addition here and there or uh you know it 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 being in a tattered condition and and so on and so forth but again the the same economy of anticipation they they do want that book at the same point of time but then again for a lesser price and then uh, there is also this parallel uh, you know set of books that is being circulated here which are in the guide books or the question paper booklet and so on and so forth again these are not available at these proper book shops so when we look at delhi's uh, when we want to have an idea about who is it that uh, can be called as a reader in delhi we really have to expand our lens and then this market is a space where you see those readers in huge numbers every sunday for the past 50 years so there are readers who need these books there are readers who are reading these books and then there is also this you know another set of parallel readers who are looking for you know rat kathaye or you know story books something that they would not intentionally go and buy because they are either expensive or unapproachable or in a language that's not you know accessible to them this place again that you know becomes that repository of that language of that you know edition where you can just accidentally find it on the street 
so i very interestingly found this um, you know manual called guru chela uh, on on you know one of these stalls and for for people who know it for somebody who is from the 90s or the 80s it was it was actually a candy that i used to have as a child but just because the cover was you know represented that for me i didn't care what's inside the book i was that incidental reader who didn't who didn't need that book who didn't know that i was the intended reader for that book but i bought it so this what i'm trying to say is that this place is that repository of that set of parallel readers and those parallel books which will then give us the idea of what constitutes delhi's readership depends on who is coming to the city who is going from the city at what point of time and what they what they need in their lives in terms of what we call books thank you yeah i think i have 2 minutes left so i have one last question mm-hmm. and this one's very self indulgent mm-hmm. and that's because you of course identified three different genres and of course i broadly agree with you but can you tell us a little bit and especially because we have an audience which may or may not be familiar with darya ganj can you tell us a little bit about the romance novels i say this because the five rupee romance novels the milson boons editions were quite the rage in the university especially in my women's hostel to a point where i knew women who would buy them by the bulk you know 50 rupees good get you 5 rupees 10 rupees and then go back the next uh, a few sundays later to return them only to come back so if you would tell us a little bit about that i think that would be great did you run into women buying them did you talk about them and not just that empty numbers of copies of you know kamal sutra there who would you know people would just not go and immediately buy or i think online uh, you know uh, you know buying would be more accessible but you see uh, people coming here and 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 there are huge stacks of these books put together and uh, a very interesting system that the booksellers had created here as well a few of them who had a huge archive of these romance you know novels was that uh, they would uh, for example give the book for 50 rupees and then take it back for 30 rupees so it it had actually they they had actually invented a library system here yeah but, uh, we had that in calcutta as well i used to call it the lending system yeah. but yeah it used to go on i had a set of the landmark for these uh, for for these you know, book sellers where we, we, which they kind of try to imitate but then they have to invent ways yeah. for in this this yeah, i think it just yeah. develops because you know people want yeah. more yeah. <laughs> so like you 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 know rightly mentioned that there are these women uh, readers who have you know found this space here where they can not keep those books at home but because of this system would just you know keep it hide it read it and then you know return it back to the bookseller and then maybe buy a next copy for themselves as well so that was something uh, you know that i noticed and and you know it was very attractive for me as well as an ethnographer of the space who is reading what and when when they are returning it as well so yeah okay right right yeah thank you so much uh, i think uh, we are at we absolutely on time here thank you swati uh, for that very engaging discussion uh, we do have a few questions already coming in and a few comments so uh, i would read out the questions first or kanupriya would you like me to read out the comments as well how do you no, prefer I, i i think we can do the questions first uh, sure then we can fit in uh, the time uh, space as well the first question is from ashok berry um is it not possible that the booksellers and customers will as it were take possession of and desanitize mahila hat despite the controlled space and the defined patches on which the booksellers spread out their books are there any indications that it is happening already uh very interestingly after the pandemic hit uh, the city the the booksellers could not set up their bookstalls again after a prolonged period of time for about 3 months after which the booksellers realized that maybe now is the time when they had to reclaim the streets but what was happening in july 2019 and and from july till september was that they did try it it was a prolonged fight between the booksellers and the authorities and the readers also joined in but the, 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 there was only a certain amount of uh, you know uh, will you know that they could exert there because this was a weekly bazaar business they could only sell books once a week so it 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 was actually causing a loss of you know livelihood for that uh, for these people as well which is why when 80% of the booksellers had moved to mahila hat most of them also you know unwillingly so 20% of them stayed back on the streets and continued their fight but then these are the booksellers who were more aware of the legalities as well 
which brings me to the point that most of these booksellers do not know how to navigate these spaces these these legal official spaces so if they have been given an, uh, an alternative and mind you after a long period of time of you know uh, you know loss of sales loss of uh, you know readership and and it's it's an incidental space so if a reader doesn't see the market on the streets for three consecutive months you know they will not come back to the space they'll they'll find alternative ways it was also july and august when you know a lot of students were coming to the city because that's when the academic session starts in delhi so they did try to sustain they they there was a uh, you know uh, you know resilience there which i could very much see but it was not something that they could uh, you know then not do and then after mahila heart was available again i will bring back the point of this being a space for incidental readers after a space was available the readers had found something that you know they could go to so it that 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 uh, i won't say that the resilience weakens is that when the alternative had shown up it it was more or less equally good for the people who were visiting it regularly who who were familiar with the space who were familiar with the booksellers or the books that you know uh, that you know that they absolutely needed for a certain amount of money or because of the quality or because of their you know rarity so after a point of time they became comf- uh, you know comfortable with the space as well which is why for the initial two weeks there were very very few you know readers there but after that time it after after a certain uh, you know amount of time it it again uh, you know back in the space but now again the booksellers are you know sitting outside my la heart and trying to reclaim the space because they realize that after all of this it's actually not working for them thank you thank you kanupriya uh the second question is from shashank angiras do you think that the sanitation of the book market by moving it into a new more legitimate more organized space has an effect on the kind of books and the kind of knowledge being disseminated since a lot of these books were obtained from outside the regular publishing and distribution cycle that's a very interesting question shashank thank you uh thankfully that has not happened but what has happened is that the price of the books has gotten affected because of the labor involved in you know uh, uh, as in getting the books here and then as i mentioned the uh, as a response to the previous question they had waited for a very long time the booksellers had uh, they most of them have you know good uh, their stocks filled up in go downs so they they are still bringing the same uh, same stack of books they they are still bringing the same uh, you know commodity but they have increased the price they have modified the ways in which they are selling it but something interesting that has happened inside mahila hat is that the ndfc has mandated that only books would be sold so what was happening on the streets was there was stationery there was paper material there was magazines that were being sold now the booksellers have to be very sure about who is coming to the market and what they are buying but again as it happened with the streets these knowledge systems are created over time so they are still mapping you know what's happening but then the pandemic hit and so on and so forth so up until now the stock has remained the same the prices have gone up the ways in which they are they have been showcased has changed but this is something that we are yet to see what kind of reader is entering the market is something that we are not familiar with yet because that has not yet become a permanent space for them as well despite it being claimed as a permanent space thank you uh the next question is from uh can't read the name preeta uh preeta mani um, hi thank you for your talk kadupriya i was wondering if you could talk a little bit about the book market's relationship to the more permanent publishing establishments that have also been located in the area i'm thinking of places like manohar or hans publications was there any kind of symbiotic relationship between these more literary establishments and the informal book selling of the market uh thank you so much preeta uh so the book, so one of the major sources for these book sellers especially for the ones who uh, have been only uh, who have only constrained themselves to the city space for you know sourcing their books is is these publishers but uh, where i uh, will draw a line is between the english publishers and the hindi publishers and also another uh, you know the the uh, comic book publishers so the hindi books uh, don't have a resale value because they are already available at a you know uh, slightly lesser price as compared to the english books and they have their you know stable readership in delhi only if the book is out of shape 
or out of a uh, sale or it has been you know uh, or it has been you know out of the circuit for a very long time is when these uh, hindi books would enter the market the english books book, booksellers have sort of a arrangement with these booksellers where they had decided upon a fixed amount of time for which they would keep the books here because also uh, you know a very important addition is that darya ganj is actually in very close proximity to ansari road where is most of these uh, you know uh, these uh, publishers are settled down so uh, what these booksellers call uh, you know what these book publishers call uh, or uh, i think remainder material is what these you know booksellers sell again going back to the communication circuit that robert danton had claimed that you know these are the proper spaces but then what what i add to it is that is when these uh, books uh, come out of it is when they enter the market so for example raj comics is very common here in in in, in you know darya ganj there's this uh, bookseller called dilshad ali who has this amazing stock of old and new raj comics and he he sources them directly from the from the publisher but the publisher has to determine when a book has to be available for them and then there are you know uh, proper evaluation methods as well price evaluation methods as well so for example if they are It, it it again depends on the number of books that they are buying and and the kind of book that they are buying but the usual quotation remains 40 to uh, uh, 20 to 40% of the stock of the price of the original uh, stock so there are ways in which it happens and there are uh, ways in which they have you know set up this system as well yeah i think that's all that i can recollect from my books chapter right now <laughs> uh the next question is from jyoti bhasin um hello ma'am thank you for such an interesting talk i have one question um do you think that pandemic was the only reason why the darya ganj book market dispersed or was there some other reasons too thank you so much jyoti thank you for attending the talk as well um uh at that point of time the pandemic was the only reason why the book market had dispersed uh because the civic authorities were trying their best to make the place available and and, and you know accessible for the for the booksellers so while from july to september and even for a couple of months later on there were ways in which the booksellers were not happy or and 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 and, and you know the protest was still going on so there was this lot of pressure on the civic authorities that you know they have to make this place work so at that moment the pandemic was the only reason and again which gets uh, so for example when the lockdown had you know uh being been removed uh, this book market was was one of the first ones to reappear as well although with you know shifted timings shifted ways and so on and so forth so at this moment yes the 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 you know pandemic was the reason why the, why this happened thank you the next question is from shomok this was hi kanupriya couple of questions number 1 how to place this latest incursion of the delhi government in what could be seen as a longer history of trying to formalize such informal market structures especially hearts and second question is is there a larger comment on the nature of business changing uh, online retail chains more commercialized real real estate etc hmm. so uh, again thank you shoma uh, for attending the talk as well um uh this is not again the only market as i mentioned that has been going through this process but as uh, swati also rightly mentioned uh, the the weekly bazaars of delhi something that has been very uh, intrinsic to the you know uh, localities within the uh, you know within which they work they're also being subjected to all of this and it's it's not uh, something that had been going on for a you know very long time but only with the new uh, you know power coming in india is when this idea of beautification and gentrification has started to enter the city uh, but the larger idea remains of you know presenting the city in a certain way a also be exercising that sort of authority in you know you know governing uh, the 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 citizens governing the natives of the city and you know uh, having having that power of making those decisions as well so that you know that was something that i could not only see on paper but also in my interaction with these authorities where their idea was that uh, if there is something that has been going on in an informal way for a very long time it 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 is it, 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 it just can't happen for a very long time as well we have we as authorities uh, you know have to enter that narrative as well um, uh, and i think that would also and about the uh, you know larger comment on the nature of the business changing uh, 
the booksellers are very much aware of the fact that this is a dying business. They are still waiting it out for, let's say, the next 10 years, and this is coming directly from the booksellers. This is not an, an assumption that I drew, uh, because for, for again, for, for someone who's very romantic about the space, I would want the space to carry on and carry forward. And one of the very uh, important instances in which this was visible is that most of the booksellers who had entered the business through their families were not letting their children into the business except if and only their children would have wanted to do that. So for example, this bookseller called you know, Mahesh Kumar who had been selling books at the market for 34 years and he has this sense of the place. He, 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 was, one of, he, he was one of the first people to start you know, selling uh, 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 these uh, syllabus books at the market. He, he's, he's one of those people who had created one of the knowledge systems at the market. But now he's very, very sure that he doesn't want you know, his children to enter the business. So what I'm trying to say is that it indicates it indicates of that sense of you know uh, the, uh, having an idea of where this book market is headed, and then there is this uh, you know piracy circuit uh, piracy circuit that is you know sort of taking over the market, and then uh, books being available in secondhand formats is also becoming something uh, you know inaccessible for these booksellers. So the sources are depleting as well, and something new something that will outdate the secondhand novel is kind of also, you know, taking over this space. So these are some of the ways in which they have a sense of this market not, uh, you know, being that uh, space which will, you know, continue in the future as well. So I, I, I hope that uh, responds to your question as well. The next question is from Emily Griffiths. Hi, thank you so much for your talk. Do you think the relocation of Darya Ganj Sunday book market has negatively impacted community identity in Delhi? Uh, thanks for this very interesting question, Emily, but this is something that I haven't looked into yet and I would really like to. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, for example, how I would, uh, I spent about three months inside the market and I could see that the kind of, for example, students I would see on the streets were not, you know, available in the market anymore. So a lot of people who had made their uh, sense of association with this space were, you know, you, you know, were the people who were not available in the market anymore. To me, this had, with the place becoming more sanitized, there, there, there was also this sanitized population inside the market. So I think, uh, in a way, if this is most to your question, that absence kind of marked, uh, you know, a uh, note in my in, in, in my observations as well that, you know, there is somebody or there is some sense of community which is not visiting the market anymore. So I'm, I'm kind of, you know, going to try to look into it uh, more. So uh, I, I can just thank you for the question. The next question is from Tanya Sengupta. Um, I found in your talk and in Swati's comment, the idea of circuits of acquisition, very interesting. Are there spe spatial links between the bazaar space and the acquisition space? For example, does acquisition happen from uh, the area around or operate through much wider geographies or both? It depends on who the bookseller is and you know what, what they're trying to sell in the market as well. So for example, uh, there is a case of someone called Abdul Wali. Uh, he uh, was brought into the business by his uncle who had created this very interesting archive of fashion magazines, but not magazines. He would you know, tear off pages from these uh, very expensive books on fashion and then create and, and, and you know, sell them per sheet. And, 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 and there was a lot of hard work involved in this. So, and for this, he had to go across the city, go across the country as well for wherever he could find these books in, in a very, uh, let's say, you know, lower price. But his, his uh, you know, nephew, Wali would think that this uh, task requires not a lot of hard work, but also the kind of hard work that he doesn't want to do, which is why he thought that he could uh, only sell, you know, syllabus books, which were available in a very small, uh, small portion of the city, which was also serving a certain, you know, kind of audience and readership there. So this, uh, there is this idea of, you know, uh, books being sourced from, uh, you know, local spaces and also international spaces and national spaces. As I mentioned, books also come in from, you know, UK and US and they, they, they arrive in Bombay and Calcutta and then is 
uh, you know that's how these books reach delhi but then this is the decision that the bookseller kind of has to create and you know because there is a diversity in the market it's not it's not an issue for the reader they 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 will find anything and everything in the market but at one specialized stall that uh, what is uh, what is going to be available at the stall is something that the bookseller is going to decide uh, i i hope that uh, i'm going to read the question again just in case yeah yeah thank you thank you kanupriya um, the next question is from anubha Hi Kanupriya thank you for your talk your point about the proximity to Ansari road makes me curious can you shed more light on the circulation networks that the Darya Ganj book market and its booksellers maintain with other locations of trade and supply in the city has it undergone any shifts due to the disruptions to the book market since 2019 fewer buyers disrupting the demand and supply or sellers not being able to maintain these networks due to capital constraints Uh, I'll answer the latter part first. Uh, again, as I mentioned earlier, these are the questions which we will have answers to later on as the market uh, spreads in that area, as the as as the booksellers, you know, actually decide to invest into the space as well. And again, they have this stock of books, for, you know, which they had gathered literally from from the city and across, which they would want to sell off first. So there has to be a balance between that and that. you know that will take some time for us to be able to answer these 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 questions but um about the uh, circulation networks that uh, this book market and book sellers maintain um uh, with other trade a very uh, something that uh, i had to remind myself constantly while doing this research is that i have to stop looking at these books as books i have to start looking them as any other commodity in exchange because uh, because they have left that proper circulation circuit a uh, proper communication circuit uh they they have also experienced the books as commodities have lost their identity as books so how the booksellers engage with the bookness of the book you know has changed so you know these are not the people who are counting on the literary value so they 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 would you know find these at you know kabadi walas they would find this uh at for example if 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 they would go to a certain person's house to to collect a lot of material is where they would also find books and then they, they they would have to look at the physical copy to see you know how much how much can they sell it for so uh, uh, starting from the book sellers to someone who was you know observing them from a distance we, we had to divorce ourselves from what a book means which is why uh, where these books are found for example uh, so clothes uh, books and computer equipments arrive at the same point in delhi from us and uk let's say and for example uh, these these books are also found at uh, for example there's this old persian market where you know where these books are found where, uh, among old rugs and so on and so forth so what i'm trying to hint at is that uh, they uh, don't look at these books as books they look at them as a certain commodity which has a resale value it's only later that they adjust the literary value to it because of the kind of customer that is coming at their stalls so yeah thank you kanupriya um i don't think we have any more questions and uh, we are very um close to 7 now so i think it's time to wrap up unless there's some uh burning question that anybody wants to put in the chat box and i would also um uh invite swati again if she has any comment or response um to this q and a session or any I... observation that you want to share i uh, i was particularly struck by the questions about the circuits of acquisition and that's and that's particularly because a kanupriya pointed to it uh, b uh, because i've never really while kanupriya was speaking it made me think of uh, the rather unsavory ways in which say library books tend to end up in places like darya ganj or pirated books or uh, you know the censored books for that matter so i was uh, my only comment here would be precisely with regards to the value of i mean the value is not necessarily in monetary terms but the value of these informal networks of acquisition and how we might think of them in terms of as i had pointed out earlier how we might think of them in terms of delhi's very characteristic 
uh, circuits of acquisition. I mean, I love that Kanupriya said that we have to stop thinking of it simply in terms of it as a book, but rather as a consumer object. Because, you know, the f the, the thing that reminds that the, uh, that this entire conversation reminded me was of motor market, where stolen parts from various parts of Delhi and beyond show up, and then they become a part of your car if necessary. So that is the, this is a particular circuit about not just uh, characteristic to Delhi, but also to second hard second hand book markets at large in India cities, and. That's actually something very fascinating to think about. And I'm very grateful for Kanupriya that, that, that this brought up because I'll be thinking about this a lot with regards to uh, the various spaces I've been to. Right. Um, I think there's one more question. Thank you, Swati. There's one more question from Hana, uh, which um, I would like to take. Um, hi, Kanupriya. Thanks for your interesting talk. Can you speak a little about how your work is collaborative with the local community and users of the market? And this is going to be our last question for this evening. I think uh, one of the ways in which I experience an ethnographic anxiety while doing this project is that how do I map the readers? This market is so much in speed there are so many kinds of people who visit it. I, 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 you know, did try to apply something called rhythm analysis here, where I would just record the space and, or just you know, make notes and then go back to them later on. I tried to speak with historians who had their contacts and you know, people who were you know, um, for example, visiting this market on a on a you know very very uh, you know, let's say repetitive uh, count. Uh, but something that helped me was. Just you know, being at the market and trying to see who is it that coming. So, so for example, at one stall in one day, I, I would just, 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 just you know, sit there and see what's happening there. But that could um, make me familiar with what I identify in my thesis as the ordinary readers or the parallel readers of the space. But something that was uh, fascinating for me was to meet the bibliophiles of Delhi. Was was to meet the people who had been relying on this market for their you know passion for book collecting, and I experienced. This, this the two fascinating meetings with one 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 journalist based in Hoth, uh, in Hoskars and one uh, NDMC official based in uh, you know Old Delhi. So I saw these two very different set of people who have been relying on this market for the past let's say twenty to thirty years. They were telling me stories about the markets. They all of their house was full of books from this market, but two very different worldviews, which told me more about the city that going to the same place for the same purpose you know there are these two people who have found two very different ways to uh, you know carry on with their romance for for books from the same site so i think that was one of the ways in which i could uh, talk about these communities of memory as well where you know these other people who are telling me the story of the market but they, they, they're also telling a story of, of themselves telling me a story about the city and how how you can be in the city as well so it was it was uh, anxious for me to be able to have a sense of who is it that uh, you know is is you know visiting this market, but it was also a wonderful experience. And now I think I would like to go back to the city and explore more ways in which I can find these people who are coming to the market or coming to that market or just you know finding ways to be in this city. Thank you so much, Kanupriya, for that very engaging talk. I'm sure a lot of us are very nostalgic and dying to go back to Delhi and uh, revisit the spaces. Um, thank you, Swati. Um, thank you, Swati. Um, and uh, to the audience members, I know a lot of you have joined from India and South Asia and it's very late there. So thank you for staying up and being with us tonight. Our next South Asia seminar will be on the 22nd of February, uh, same time, 5.30 p.m. And we'll have amongst us Dr. Vibhuti Duggal from Ambedkar University, who will be speaking on becoming a listener in mid 20th century North India. So do join us and thank you again. Stay well, stay safe. And uh, thank you for joining us tonight. <laughs>